Many of us are anxious to get our lives back to normal. But for that to happen, enough of us must get vaccinated against COVID-19. I'm vaccinated and encourage you to take your best shot by doing the same as soon as possible. People from diverse races and ethnicities tested the vaccines in large clinical trials to prove they are safe and highly effective. Getting vaccinated for COVID-19 is free and does not require proof of residency, citizenship, or insurance. Houston Health Department vaccination clinics accept walk-ins and are located across the city. Find a nearby site at HoustonEmergency.org or by calling 832-393-4220 or 832-393-4301. Splendor of our King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice.
how great is our God. Our scripture reading this evening will come from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 14, and also from chapter 30, verse number 22. It reads as follows. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather ye from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Verse 30 and 22, And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his most holy word. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, we come to you right now just to say thank you for another day's journey. This time did not have to be, but you have allowed it to be so. Early this morning, you allowed us to rise and see another day's journey with a reasonable portion of, of our health and strength. You woke us in our right mind. You brought us throughout the day with no hurt, harm, and danger. We just want to say thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for one more chance to tell somebody about your goodness, your grace, your mercy. We also, dear Lord, want to say, we just want to ask you for forgiveness for our sins. We haven't done everything that's according to your will, but we ask that you will continue to strengthen us and give us the heart, the mind, the desire to do your will and to follow you and be righteous in, for your name's sake. Lord, as we look around, everything around us is, seems to be in disarray. There are shootings, road rage, killings, wars and rumors of wars, nations, powerful nations right now are developing weapons, another arms race, trying to get the most sophisticated weapons to destroy others. Lord, we're not worried. All of these things you said had to come to pass. But we ask that you will keep us, keep us strong and let us remember the words of Jeremiah that we need to pray and seek your face. Keep us strong, dear Lord. We ask that you will bless us all individually and collectively. Lead us from one good degree of grace unto another. Lord, we pray that every family, every ear that is listening on this social media feed, bless them, dear Lord. Somebody may be sick. Somebody may be lost, may not know their way. Give them, dear Lord, what they need to go just a little bit further. All we ask is in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. We ask that you will bless the pastor of this church, Dr. Max A. Miller. 
Bless him in such a way, dear Lord, that he can continue to lift up your word and feed the sheep and do the things that you would have him to do in such a magnificent way. Bless all the families here at Mount Hebron Baptist Church. One by one, name by name, give us all what we need to make it just one more day. Now, Lord, we want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus. He went to that old rugged cross, and he died for our sins. He didn't have to do it, dear Lord, and we just want to say thank you. But we know, dear Lord, that on that third day morning, we believe in our hearts that he rose, and we know right now that he sits at your right side, interceding for us with all power. Not some power, dear Lord, but all power in heaven and on earth. Dear Lord, we want to serve the one who has all power. Yes, Lord, all power, all power in the precious name of Jesus and for his sake. We pray this prayer. Amen. Thank you. 
And all the people said, Amen. God bless our singers on tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank God for them. And uh, let me thank God for Brother Hill, who always know what to play. It's a gift that God has given him. We thank God for him. Come on, let's give it up for Brother Brother Hill. Amen. Amen. Thank God for him. Let me thank God for you tonight. Those of you that have made it to uh, the house of worship to worship and praise his, his name. He allowed the rain not to let you stay at home, but you came to church anyway. And it's good to see you. Uh, may God continue to bless you. Is that Sister Brian over there? Yeah, that's Sister Brian. I'm going to stop talking about Sister Brian driving because she make it here. I want to thank God for her, her faithfulness. Amen. We thank God for her. What a mighty God we serve. Um, let me do this before I forget, Brother Cherry and Brother Fisher. I need to see you right after church. Uh, I don't want to forget when you get out of here. I want to make sure I see you uh, right after. Sister Solomon, I need to see you as well. Amen. Uh, good to see Sister Lynn here. Amen. Good God Almighty. Thank God for her. There's a word tonight. I'm going to try to talk tonight. I'm going to try. I don't know what chair if I'm going to make it through. Um, as I say in a lot of homegoing services, uh, I, I plan on talking, but if I preach, that's because I'm a preacher. If I don't, it's because I told you I wasn't going to preach. So either way it goes, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, in that 125th number of the psalm, Psalm 125, amen. Psalm 125, amen. Yeah. It, it reads like this for us tonight. It says, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed but abided forever. They that that trust in the Lord tells me everybody don't trust him. You can come to church and still not trust him. You can sit in the pew and still not trust him. Brother Jerry, you can preach God's word and still not trust him. You can tell the usher's clothes off and jump over the pew. still not trust him. But they that trust and lean on and have a confident hope in the Lord are like Mount Zion. We'll talk about Mount Zion in a minute. Which cannot. I don't know if you trust in it. Because if you do, Sister Dunham, you cannot be moved. You're like a solid rock mountain. God can always depend on you like we depend on him. I, I, I want to talk, Sister Cherry, I want to talk briefly. They that trust in the Lord. Amen. That, that's enough. That's enough. They that, that trust in the Lord. All of us will have to 
admit that we're serving God in some strange times. That we have to be honest. And we have never had to serve God the way we're serving him now. There's a difference when you don't come to church and when you can't come. And let me thank you. Let me thank every last one of you who voted for proposition number three. And I have to thank you because it's bad enough that this pandemic has slowed the enrollment of church membership inside of the building for the government to come along and try to push a proposition through where they have just as much authority as God to tell us when we can open the churches. I say we're serving God in some, some strange times. But they that, that trust in the Lord won't be shaken by the wiles of the devil. I, I say they that, that, that trust in him. Troubles and, and trials and tests and tribulations, and stress, and mental disorders and depression. In all sorts of tough situations can shake a person. And not only can it shake a person, but it can also make a person question their faith. And I know, I, I'm aware that, that you've been saved and you're born again, you blood bought, water baptized. I get all of that. But I wish I had some real folk in here tonight that can admit to me that you are just like I am. That at some point in your Christianity, that the things you were going through kind of shook your faith. That it shook you to the point where you wondered if God was still in your coma, it, it messed with you so, so bad that while you were praying, you were wondering if God was listening to your prayer. It, it shook you so much that sometimes we missed a couple of Sundays at church because we were at home with a case of spiritual blues. And we were wondering if God was paying us back for some of the misrascalities that we had committed. And that we wondered if the Lord had taken his joy. David says, God, whatever you do, please don't take your joy from me. I need about ten folk in the house tonight that you can wave at me, that you ask the Lord the same thing. Lord, please don't. Take your jar. Take anything else from me, but don't, don't take. Let me go ahead and drop this in for free. Is there anybody other than me that came in the house of the Lord with a hangover from what you were going through? And when everybody else was shouting, you couldn't shout. When the preacher was preaching, you couldn't clap. When everything was going on haywise and otherwise, you couldn't do nothing because your faith was shaken. And you wondered if the Lord had given up on you and you did not know if God was still there because your joy was gone. And you didn't know how long your joy was going to be gone because every Sunday you came to church to shout, but you couldn't get your shout on. You came the church to praise him but you couldn't wave your hand but let me go ahead and ask you this wasn't you happy when you got your joy back that the Lord released you unshackled you unchained you you were able to 
shout again. I need somebody on Zoom and Facebook and Instagram that can place it in your chat, your IM and your DM that you were guilty of your joy being gone, but you were glad when the Lord gave you some joy back. And you were just like the summons that you said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But let me tell you when your faith is questionable. Let me hurry up and tell you that spiritual security, spiritual stability belong to those of us who walk by faith. And let me tell you that no matter what you're going through, you're not the first person to go through. And you're not the only person that will go through. No matter what's going on, let me tell you, you have to walk by faith. And let me slip this in. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what do you do when your faith seems to be shaken? Pick up the word of God. Because our strength comes in. The word of God. And the psalmist told me to tell you tonight. Righteous believers. Are secure in the Lord. That no matter what I'm going through. Because I've been declared righteous. I'm secure. No matter what you say, no matter what you think, no matter how you talk up or talk down on me, because I'm a righteous believer, brother Donham, I'm secure in the Lord. I need somebody else that you're not ashamed to let somebody know that you're safe and secure in the Lord because the Lord have already blessed you. Can I go ahead and do it tonight? And every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. I'm, I'm secure in the Lord because I'm a righteous believer. I'm not a perfect believer, but I'm a righteous believer. And, and those of righteous believers are secure in the Lord who will not let them be tested to the point of their integrity being shaken. And every now and then, when I talk to the Lord, the answer don't come out the way I want it to. But because I'm a righteous believer, no matter how shaken I become, the Lord will not let me be shaken to the point that my integrity in Christ is questioned. And I may be down today, but you just keep on following me. I'll be up tomorrow. I, I may be messed up, tore up from the floor up today. Just keep on following me. I tell you, but Fisher, I'll be up tomorrow. I mean, I know what the Lord have in store for me. But I tell you, I'll be up. Can I drop this in your lap for free? I don't have time for folk that's always thinking down and negative because I serve an up God. And if COVID-19 haven't taught me anything else, COVID-19 have taught me that sometimes I have to encourage myself that even when I'm down in the dumps, I don't need nobody else to encourage me. I get in the mirror and encourage myself. Because the Lord has still, he's been good to me. The first the grand images of this text. The psalmist sets for the stability of those of us who trust in Yahweh. When you trust in Yahweh, when you trust in the Lord, when you trust in God, I like it because he says, they that trust. Not, not them that rush God, but them that Trust God because somebody know you can't hurry God. Sometimes you have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. No matter how, how long it takes. Can I tell you why? He's a God that you can't hurry. But I tell you, he'll be there. Don't worry. 
He may not come when you, when you want him to. But I need somebody that will wave at me tonight that he's always on time. He said that you put your trust there. Trust meaning that I'm confident in God. And when I all wrestle with my enemies, I already know no matter how large their biceps are because the Lord is on my side. When I all wrestle with them, I'm confident that I'm going to come out on the winning side. I'm going to come out on the winning side. Because not only do I place my confidence, I, my, my trust, but I, I believe in God. I believe God and they that trust in the Lord, the self-existing one, the one who's done everything from anybody want to admit tonight that you are where you are because God is who he is. No matter what I've gone through, God has been good. No matter how many storms and trials that have come my way, God is still a good God. I need somebody else to identify with me tonight that no matter what you've gone through, you may not be where you want to be, but you can thank God that you're not where you used to be. Because God is so good. God is so good that he's a self-existent eternal God that nobody else is like God. Because he's God. Yes, he is. All by himself. Those who lean and trust on him and have confidently hope in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Somebody missed that. You rushed across that when we read it. But let me tell you, Mount Zion is sought after as Jerusalem. It's equivalent to what Jerusalem is. And when you think about having confidence let me tell you when I get to the mountain the reason why I can trust uh, as if I'm Mount Zion is because God honors those who have confidence then uh, God honors the confidence of the people that really trust in God is there anybody tonight that somebody try to steer you wrong but you stood up on what the word says. Some friends we have to get rid of. Because they're always trying to detour your progress. Can I let you know everybody is not happy with where you are in Christ. And many times it's the ones that are closest to us. That want to be hypocrites. But they're ready for us to fall so they can remind us what we used to be. Don't nobody need to remind me what I used to be because I have not forgotten where I come from. But let me tell you, I like to talk about where I used to be. Because it gives me joy to know where I am now. That all of us are used to be something. I know you don't want to admit it. You want somebody to believe that you've been in the church. Talking about you've been in church all your life. Maybe you have, but you haven't been saved all your life. You've been a hypocrite just like other hypocrites. We were all on our way to hell if it had not been for Jesus. And the Lord says they that trust in him. But I thought about this city of Jerusalem. From Jackson makes Mount Zion something special. I get it. And they that trust in the Lord. And the reason why I get it because you may not want to admit it tonight, but I have to admit it. The Lord has gotten me out of some tough situations. He's gotten me out of some death traps. The Lord had picked me up when I thought up was down. And somebody tonight know the Lord have done some great things for you. When you didn't have enough money, had more bills than you had income coming in, the Lord still kept a roof over your head. 
And when you didn't have no sense to trust in the Lord, the Lord kept you anyway. And I believe that's why my grandmama loved that song, Oh, to be kept by Jesus. I thought it was my youthfulness that kept me. I thought it was me lifting weights that kept me. I thought it was me being smart, slick, and tricky was keeping me. But when I found out how good the Lord was, I found out I wasn't keeping myself. I need somebody to shout with me tonight. Place it in your chat, in your feed. All to be kept. And can I tell you, he keeps on keeping me. Jerusalem. They that trust in the law. Did you notice when you look at the text, it did not say they might be, but it says they shall be. it's, It's an absolute form of be that if I trust in him, I'm like this mountain. And and when you look at the mountain, it's not like one of the mountains that you see in the hill country. It's a mountain that's, that's, that's a permanent fixture that is set up. And the way Mount Zion is set up, the way Jerusalem is set up, is set up with walls around it. It's, it's set up that is so deeply rooted that even the fiercest hurricane, the fiercest volcano, the fiercest earthquake can't move Jerusalem because Jerusalem is set there. Jerusalem is a permanent fixture that established and rooted so that it cannot be shaken. And the Lord says when you when you trust in me you are firmly set where nothing can shake you. I, I got to tell you that's some good news. Because when, when, when I looked at it, when I thought about it, we are built upon a solid rock. And that solid rock is Jesus. And, and, be, and because of the solid foundation, because of, 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 of this, this, this mercy that we have, this protection, because I trust it. Anybody trust it? That they that, that seriously trust. Check out, check out Jerusalem. It, it, it was a city that's surrounded by hills. And with the hills came two sets of walls. And even with the walls, Jerusalem had something else going for it. That no other mountain had. Jerusalem and Mount Zion. Was where the temple of Jehovah was. That no matter how firm another mountain was. Only Mount Zion was the temple. And it was the temple of God. And the throne of David. Now check this out. It was God's glory. And God's authority. That dwelt in God's people. You missed that one. They that trust. In the Lord. Is God's glory. And God's authority. That dwelt. In God's people. Let me me get it closer. Sister Binder. Because I'm one of God's people. And because I give God glory, then God grants my authority. Because I trust in him. And I'm not frightened to praise him. I'm not 
upset to give God the glory instead of myself. Then by God's authority, he gives me what's on the inside that keeps me firm, that I'm anchored like Mount Zion. Let me get a little closer. I can't come to church and sit still like the Lord has never done nothing. Because I found out that the more I give him what he already has, the more authority he places in me. You, 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 you want to know why, why Brother Cherry don't know how to pray without getting loud? It's something on the inside. And because of who he belongs to, when he started talking about that man, he can't help but give him glory. And because we give him glory, he strengthens us with his authority. And the reason why I can stand and preach and yell and holler is because the Lord has put something on the inside of me. That every time I stand before his people and give him the glory, he gives me the authority to say what well, thus says the Lord. Oh, I feel pretty good right now. But, but watch this. Watch this. I got to get out of here. I said I wasn't going to be long tonight. Watch this. Those that trust, I, I keep going back there. Because some of us know church protocol. Some of us know church rules and regulations. But I'm frightened that we don't know the ruler. Some of us come to church like God owes us something. But I come to church because my strength is in the church and not because he owes me. But I owe him. And I owe him because when I was on my way to hell, he saved me. And let me go ahead and tell you, you can go to hell from a second seat on the pew. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying not to preach. I'm all up in this thing. I'm trying not to preach. Let me, let, let me, let me tell you. Let me go ahead and tell you. Let me tell you where Mount Zion is. Because it's, it's, it's so firmly placed. It says, they that the trust. Is there anybody that have confidence in God tonight? I mean, if you have confidence, you ought to go ahead and put it in your chat, your IM, and your DM. I mean, if you really have confidence tonight, do you have confidence that when God is ready, COVID-19 will move out? They that the trust in the law shall be as Mount Mount Zion which means that believers the saints of God ought to be tucker truck tough and we ought to be so tough and tough don't mean that you can't get down sometimes. Tough does not mean you can't cry sometimes. Tough don't mean that you can't question sometimes. Did not you hear her back up? Say, Lord, I know you're God. But how long? How, Lord, you, you know I'm trying to do right. 
Brother Proctor, you know I'm trying to live right. But Lord, I know you have all the power in your hand. But Lord, how long? How long would you let me call on your name? It seems as if you are ignoring me. I said, how long will you allow me to praise you? And it seems as if you won't allow me to see my wicked perish. How long? He says, what I need you to know is that they are trusting the Lord. They're like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Which means be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. And I come by to tell you tonight, he says, when you're like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, it means that when you're like Mount Zion, you're like some great animal who's couched at ease. And the mountain lies in a restful strength. Nothing can just shake Mount Zion. And I come by to let you know that when, when we trust in God, we too can be just like Mount Zion. The Lord say to thee that trust in him shall not be removed, but abide forever. And when I thought about the word removed. It says in Psalm 16 and 8. That I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand. And I shall not be moved. And all I'm trying to tell you is that forever means more than a temporary promise. Forever means from now on they that trust in the Lord shall understand. But I got to close even right here. But not only they that trust in the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Mm, they shall mount up with wings. As he is, mm, they shall, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord will take care of you. Is there anybody here that knows that the Lord will and the Lord can? Is there anybody here tonight that will admit that you trust in the Lord and since you trust in him, he's all over you. I come to tell you about a little song that says he's all over me and he's keeping me alive. Is there anybody who will shout with me 
the Lord is keeping us alive and because he keeping us alive I can't help but shout glory the Lord has been so good to me and now he's in my hands he's in my feet and I can't keep my seat when I think about how good the Lord has been I cannot just sit down upon the Lord he's been too good to me and I can't tell it all the night but I can tell you he's so good he put clapping in my hands he's so good he put running in my feet he's in my spirit he's in my soul and I never grow but I come by to tell somebody on my way to my seat he's in my heart and he's in my mind and I'm just glad the Lord is mine is there anybody here that know the Lord is yours and because you trust in him you can stand on your feet because you trust in him you can clap your hands the Lord will take care of us ain't it alright I think I told you I was on my way to a devil's hell and over 2,000 years ago there was one who came to Calvary just to die for you and for me his name is Jesus his title is Christ is there anybody here who loves my Jesus is there anybody here who loves my Lord he will walk with me he will talk with me I said he died didn't he die but right early I said early right early on the third day morning with all power in his hand is there anybody here that don't mind waving your hand because the Lord saved your soul is there anybody here that don't mind waving cause he made you whole ain't it alright I say ain't it alright say yeah say yeah say yeah say yeah ain't it alright say yeah do you trust him if you trust in the Lord you ought to shout glory if you trust in the Lord shout hallelujah if you trust in the Lord say yeah say yeah say yeah I know he's alright I said I trust in him do you trust in him I said I trust in the Lord do you trust him do you trust him do you trust him say yeah say yeah say yeah say yeah ah, They that trust in the 
Lord. I don't know about you. But I trust God. Wholeheartedly. I mean, I trust him. To where whatever he does, it's all right with me. I say I've learned to trust him. Because I've been a part of his miracle working power. I can't help but trust him. Because when folk told me I'd never be nothing, God made me somebody. When doctors told me I wasn't going to live, God brought me through. When folk and grown folk looked down on me, God brought me up. And who would have thought that Max Miller would make 59 years old? And you telling me that I can't put my trust in somebody other than me. You've been there that you know you don't have no business being alive. But God I, I say, but God, it, it, it wasn't my mama, it wasn't my daddy, oh yeah, they prayed for me, but it was God, and this period is our invitation to discipleship. Somebody tonight, by way of Zoom, by way of Facebook, by way of Instagram, or by way of YouTube, you may want to come tonight. You may want to join. You say, well, Pastor, I want to join, but I'm not in the church house. If you're on Zoom, you can place it in your chat. All you have to do is say, I want to be a member of the Mount Hebron Church. If you've never been baptized, if you believe in your heart, and you let it come out your mouth, that you trust in him, that you believe Jesus died and rose again, We'll take care of the baptizing later. We'll take you in. If you're on Facebook tonight, you can put it in your comments or your I am. If you're on Instagram, put it in your direct message. And we'll be so happy to take you in. Well, if you're on YouTube tonight, we ask you to take this number and call it 713-733-9170. We ask you to come. We would love to have you. This is our invitation to you tonight. It's ours to extend to you. And it's yours to accept or reject. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. As we thank God for, for his Holy Spirit. Thank God for 
who he is and what he's done for us. Thank God for you, anybody that was helped by the singing, the praying, the scripture reading, and even the word of God. You ought to go ahead and put some clapping hands in your chat and your feed. And then place in there, I was helped tonight. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Let me go ahead and thank those that have already given on Givelify. Those that have given on Cash App. We thank you for your gifts that you have already given. There are some that's in here tonight that you want to leave your offering. Whether it's for the ministry that you serve in. Or if you want to take this five from me. Or if you want to just leave an offering. Because you're in the house of the Lord. Many of you have already given your offering by give the five. But if you have not, Brother Fisher stand at the table and on your way out you can make sure you drop yours in if you did not get your tides in for last Sunday you can drop that in the receptacle as well again we thank God for each and every one of you may God bless you may God keep you is our prayer come on Let's pray over this offering before we get it. Lord, how we thank you for being God all by yourself. Lord, we trust in you. And we trust in you because you're God. So, Lord, I ask and I, I pray. That you would take these gifts that we give to you. That you place it in the heart of man where you want it allocated. That you place it in the heart of the preacher. Of where to place it for the ongoing of that kid. So that the preacher don't do it on his own. But that he does it. The way you, Lord, will have him to do. Then bless the givers. Because we know now that our blessings are tied to our giving. And if we want to be blessed fully, if we want to be blessed wholly, then we have to give it to you first. Thank you, Master, for the cheer for givers. And then, Master, I ask that you touch the hearts of those that have not started giving yet. That the next time they would give. We ask that in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank each and every one of you. I'm going to ask that Reverend Jackson would come and give us the benediction as he come and get ready to stand. Uh, Sister Graham put Sister Glasses on for Sunday. So, amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people said, Amen. This is our benediction. <laughs>